Greetings and welcome to an Odyssey of Territory. I'm your grateful host, Dan Riley. If listening, please follow me on your podcasting hosting site. If watching on YouTube and the spirit so moves you, please subscribe, like, comment, and share. A few years back, I read a book titled The Inspiring Leader. It was written by three fellows whose backgrounds were in consulting, research, and hard data analytics in the field of leadership, primarily in a corporate environment. And as they reveal in their book, the last topic they ever believed they would tackle is one as soft, squishy, and touchy-feely as inspiration in the workplace. But they found they could no longer ignore the subject. The data they had accumulated over the years, a database of over 200,000 respondents giving 360 feedback on over 20,000 bosses, found that, by far and away, the single most effective result-producing competency in a leader is his or her ability to inspire and motivate others to high performance. Other effective competencies were had a clear vision, communicated effectively, drove hard for exceptional results, integrity and honesty, technical savvy, people skills, and the like. All important, of course, but not as important as the ability to inspire. Now, for me, after spending four decades in a corporate environment, being both boss and subordinate simultaneously, as is the reality in the corporate world, I didn't need a book to tell me that. That was my own experience. Of course, the exceptional leaders, the most effective bosses, are the ones who inspire people. Not manipulate them, not bribe them, not cajole them, not scare them to death, but inspire them. And guess what? I don't know an honest corporate warrior that wouldn't claim the same thing. Before I move on as to how we acquire or discover, or more precisely, how we unfold this state of inspiration in ourselves to deploy in the workplace, let's define it. A classic dictionary definition would be the process of being mentally stimulated to do or feel something, especially something creative. But I prefer the definition from the 14th century. Back then it was defined as a divine influence upon a person, putting life into something that was erstwhile lifeless, an infusion of spirit into matter. This is why leadership experts mostly stay away from the topic. Compared to revenue growth, bottom line profits, Quarterly earnings, inspiration is a transcendent topic. It can't be reduced to a single, scalable formula. It's more an art than a science. Corporations like hard data. Sales are up 5%. Labor costs are down 2%. Subscriptions are up 6%. And profits are up 3%. Inspiration, like its first cousin charisma, can't be quantified by words or formulas alone. In a sense, it's inscrutable. It exists in a realm beyond the reaches of traditional analytics. Inspiration is not a skill you acquire. It's more a feeling you capture than exude. And while the data conclusively proves that a workforce infused with inspiration will empirically outperform uninspired workforces, it is almost impossible to identify each specific ingredient that a leader must possess to be inspirational. But we can get really close. I liken it to a food recipe, one where each master chef tweaks the recipe a bit to suit their own strengths and preferences. To be sure, inspirational leadership doesn't come from just one thing. Oh, there are requisite staples, and we'll talk about those. But every individual needs to identify from their own unique personality traits those combinations of complementary ingredients which creates this magnetic, magical force, the one we routinely call inspiration. Now, for the obvious question for anyone who has worked in or is working in a corporate environment. If inspirational leadership is known to be the single most important competency, why are there relatively so few inspirational leaders in the workplace? Firstly, the inherent structure of corporations sets up competing and conflicting values. Retailers may boast family first as one of their core values, but their key employees are required to work weekends and holidays. And if they don't, good luck on making the quarterly numbers. Google claims as one of their values, democracy on the web works, yet YouTube's community guidelines will not allow for certain opinions on the efficacy of mandatory vaccinations. Secondly, and the larger reason is this, 
that virtually all companies have as one of their foundational core values, conformity. Oh, you won't find it listed as a value or you won't find it on any mission statement, but it is the most ubiquitous of all corporate values. And on some level, it makes sense. It makes perfect sense. If an organization through trial, error, and osmosis has discovered an optimal combination of skills, talents, disposition, experience, and personality traits in their employees, which have delivered acceptable results over time, of course they're going to replicate it throughout the organization. And for the most part, this replication is not a conscious, strategic decision a company makes. It is subtle, organic process taking place over time. It's just human nature. But you can be rest assured of this. All ambitious and upwardly mobile employees notice and have come to understand the fastest way to get ahead in a company is to conform. And by definition, the process of conforming requires an individual to change their beliefs, attitude, actions, and perceptions to match those of the group or organization to which they are conforming. We see this phenomenon all the time in the corporate world. Company leaders don't say, talk like I talk, dress like I dress, wear your hair as I do, read what I read, use the same buzzwords I use, and on and on it goes. Of course they don't say these things to their subordinates. But the positional power of corporate leaders have an awesome conforming impact and cast a long shadow on their workforce. Now, on the other hand, highly inspirational leaders are uncompromisingly authentic. Authenticity is a staple ingredient of inspirational leaders. Now, that's not to say that conformity and inspiration are mutually exclusive, but it is the rare individual who can master both simultaneously. That's why we rarely find the CEO or the president of any organization as the most inspirational leader in that organization. As I mentioned earlier, if you were to ask anyone that has spent a considerable amount of time in the corporate world, very few would tell you the most inspirational boss they ever had was the president or the CEO. Now, I think they would only admit to that off the record, but there is no doubt if a company has had enduring success, 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 somewhere in that company, there are inspirational leaders. Before we talk about the specific characteristics of inspirational leadership, let's explore the difference between inspiration and motivation. They're often used interchangeably, and they ought not to be. Motivation has what we call a push factor, an outside force compelling one to take action. Its origin is external in nature, usually resulting in a short shelf life, but it, but it is often the chief force for achieving goals. Inspiration, on the other hand, has an internal pull factor. It has more of a lasting and lingering impact. Motivational leaders fire up their teams. Inspirational leaders touch something deep inside. The legendary football coach Vince Lombardi claimed the primary difference between the two is that inspiration is based on a spiritual quality. Okay, what are the characteristics of inspirational leadership? Based on the research and my own experience, I've discovered six must-haves if one is to be an inspirational leader. Number one, being in the state of inspiration. Not every moment of every day, but certainly as a predominant personality characteristic. And this state is all but impossible to define. It's akin to what Judge Potter Stewart said about pornography. I can't accurately define it, but I know it when I see it. Additionally, there is no single gateway to the state. It can come from listening to music, a walk in the park at lunch, going to a religious service, or reading sacred texts, uh, sacred uh, scriptures. For others, it might be reading poetry or listening to speeches. Irrespective of how one captures this mysterious state, the fact is inspiration is highly contagious. Number two, uncompromising authenticity. No person is generally inspired by a corporate clone. And the dictum that a leader should not display weakness is antiquated. Every human being has a blend of competencies and vulnerabilities. Inspirational leaders show both. Oh, I'm not saying one should become a puddle of bush at work, but bosses need not pretend they have no vulnerabilities. Number three, express emotions. Don't suppress them. Compared to other creatures, displaying emotion is what makes us uniquely human. When I was working 
for a retailer years ago, I can still remember the CEO calling a meeting of, le of the leadership group. He announced that we would be laying off several hundred people and that we would need to put our hearts in our desk drawers. <laughs> no, no, no. Terrible advice. Sure, the layoffs had to be done, but it was the precise time to wear our hearts on our sleeves, not put them in a desk drawer. Too many leaders pretend not to be human. Come on. Who are they kidding? Even the boss should let happy things make her happy and sad things make him sad. None of us should let life kill us, but bosses should let their subordinates see that, yes, indeed, that life touches them too. Number four, presence. Wherever you are, be there. It's impossible to connect to people unless you're present, not ruminating about last week's Zoom meeting or thinking about next month's management conference. And number five, communicate with energy. Energy is the primary way we convey passion. And like inspiration, passion is highly contagious. Inspirational leaders get excited about communicating heartfelt appreciation. They get excited about the success of their organizations. They are excited to create vivid images of where the organization is going in the future. And the last one, number six, Inspirational leaders see their role not as a job, but to them it's their raison d'etre, a major component of their purpose in life, their mission here on earth. There you have it, the six must-haves for inspirational leaders. As I said earlier, inspirational leadership is not just one thing, and not everyone is inspired by the same traits or combination of competencies. So, in addition to the must-haves, other companies, competencies need to be part of a leader's repertoire if they are to reach a critical mass of their subordinates. Surveys of subordinates found that one or more of the following competencies were attributes of highly inspirational leaders. Number one is emotionally available. Number two creates stretch goals. Number three, invests in developing my talents. Number four, makes bonding with people a priority. Number five, rewards effort along with results. Six, gives regular feedback on my performance. And lastly, encourages risk-taking. I think we could all agree, both in and out of the corporate milieu, our world is in dire need of more inspirational leaders. The French pilot, poet, and writer Antoine du saint Expiry captured the essence of an inspirational leaders when he wrote, If you want to build a ship, don't drum up the people to, get, to gather wood, divide the work, and give the orders. Instead, teach them to yearn for the vast and endless sea. If listening, please follow me on your podcasting hosting site. If watching on YouTube, please hit that subscribe button so the algos may shed their grace on me. And don't forget that like, comment, and share. And as for my part in today, that's all the real. This is Dan Riley taking you on an odyssey and territory. Until next time, throw up the bow line, sail away from the safe harbor, catch the trade winds in your sails. We're on the move now.